It's the nation's favourite antiques expert. Yeah! Super cool. How about that? Behind the wheel of a classic car. <laughs> and a goal to scar Britain for antiques. <laughs> The aim? To make the biggest profit at auction. But it's no mean feat. There'll be worthy winners... Yes! ..and valiant losers. Blast it! Will it be the high road to glory... <laughs> ..or the slow road to disaster? Oh, this is the Antiques Road Trip. <laughs> beep, beep. Welcome to Yorkshire's West Riding. God, it's grand, isn't it? Do you know what? I think it's these, these dry stone walls. I think they're just brilliant. I just love walls. <laughs> Do you know what? That's an amazing quote. I love walls. I just love walls. <laughs> Our wallo files, Philip Searle and Natasha Raskin and Sharp, will be taking in God's own county today in their trusty 64 Sunbeam. I want you to give me a tune that you choose for our road trip. I'd probably go for a bit of New Young. I'd go for a bit of ABBA. You know what, ABBA? Money, money! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's gloating. And with good reason. Last time out, an attack of the wobbles left Natasha with a last-minute panic buy. Right, right, OK, where do I start? Where do I start? While a detour to a funeral parlour landed Philip with some ecclesiastical brass. I'm going to shut you by the hand on that. OK, don't. My pleasure. They made a heavenly £150 profit at auction. Someone's looking out for you. I have a plan for today, right? I am going to be scouring the countryside for undertakers. Well, so am I. Are you? Imagine if we both turned up in the same undertakers. Awkward. <laughs> Natasha's crown slipped slightly as her fortune fell to £235.80. But Phillips leapt into the lead with £343.40 to take to the shops today. What happened to my £80 lead? Do you remember that? Remember my £80 lead? Hey, it's not over yet, Natasha. They started their trip at Louth in Lincolnshire and headed up the Pennines. They'll eventually end up at a final auction in the west at St Anne's on Sea. Later, we'll be heading to auction back where it all began, at Louth. But for now, we kick off in Yorkshire at Bingley, got it? This market town on the banks of the River Eyre can trace its origins back to Saxon times. But it's also where the Airedale Terrier was first bred. Oh, wow. It looks like a post box. <laughs> Certainly does. Let's hope Antiques Retro and Vintage have some first-class items, then. Hello there. Hi. Hello, hi. <laughs> hi, I'm Natasha. Pleased to meet you, Mike. Mike, it's this lovely is Christian. to meet you. Oh, hi, Christian, in the egg. <laughs> There's a future Bond villain there. This is Chocker. You're not kidding, girl. It might be postage stamp sized, but they've squeezed an awful lot of bits and bobs in here, and the upside is you don't have to walk too far to find something of interest. Here we have a beautiful arts and crafts, brass, jardinier and stand, which I think are, yes, they're integrated. Sometimes they're one on top of the other. This is a fully integrated piece. And sometimes the beaten design, this is repoussé work, so pushed out, is more intricate, but actually, this minimalism is what makes this so beautiful. Less is more here. You can just imagine this in a beautiful Victorian home. And coming out of this, if you're a Victorian, your Aspidistra plant, which just would not die. It just would not die. Mike's got it priced up at £160. This is probably weighted. Yeah, it's a heavy beast. Let's have a little look. Sometimes it will say something like handmade in England, or handcrafted, but I don't see a stamp like that. That is so heavy. Oh, that's gorgeous. It's really striking. But I'm going to keep looking. You can't just walk into a shop like this and just go to the first thing I see. Or can I? Might be rude not to browse a bit more, but I think she's quite taken with it. Meanwhile, Philip has motored on. He's pointed the sunbeam towards the neighbouring village of Cullingworth. And given that this is sheep country, his first retail opportunity is in this former wool mill. Tasha Wentini, Phil's going large. Hi, hi, hi. I'm Philip, how are you? Oh, hi, I'm good Helen. To, Welcome to, to Antiques at the Mill. Wow, well, you've got a lovely centre here, haven't you? Thank you very much. We try and do a bit of everything. Well, I only want a bit of something. I'll come have a look round. <laughs> I think he's going to have to put in a fair amount of legwork here. 12,500 square feet packed with interesting somethings. 
Ooh, I like those. Now this is salt glazed, a process where they basically chuck salt into the kiln and it gave this, fi this finish here. And there is a bit of a recurring theme to this road trip because we bought almost part of the house, got bricks. We've had a finial for all the good that did me. And, and, and I, I just love these chimney pots. 55 pounds is the price on that. And these things always get damaged here, always get broken. And that one's not too bad. Should I be learning a lesson from bricks and roof finials? Mm. I do like it. I guess not then. Oh look, they're everywhere. I mean, you kind of think that's the same. Actually, it's a different shape to the other one because the other one had got a square base and this one's got a round base. But I'm sort of kind of thinking that they're close enough to be similar. There's a bit of white beard and a red cloak in here where Father Christmas has been down here that many times. That'll make it worth the £30 asking price then. Ah. So, while he ponders his pot, back in Bingley, Natasha still has her eye on that big bit of brass. And there's certainly a bit of a theme in here. You have so much brass and copper. Is this a personal preference? I do like it. I uh, don't like brass in it all, though. But... <laughs> so, hold on. Look at something like this. Oh. Again, I wouldn't have cleaned that up. That's got a nice aged patina with it. I think that's gorgeous. That's copper, right? And then, yes. Do you think these patches are repairs? Yeah, I think mm -hmm. they may have made it with all the bits that they had left. Yeah, uh, I love and, that. Yeah. So if this were Victorian British copper, this would have more of a beak? It would have more yeah, of a spout? Yeah, in and usage again. It would probably have more of a conical shape, wouldn't it? But this is just so rustic. Maybe continental, maybe even Middle Eastern. Mm -hmm. I think this is cool. We're definitely into heavy metal today. What are you looking for? For goodness no. sake, Mike, don't look at the price. That was your first mistake. No, I was looking to see if there's any holes in. The best way, to be honest, is point it to the window and look inside that way. Of course, the old trick. And Anything? it's full of holes. <laughs> I think he's being wholly honest here, don't you? He's got 50 pounds on that. Shall we get down to brass tacks? I saw 160 pounds on the plant. Yes. So my question is, would you sell it to me for the 100 pounds? No, that is a bit low. Too low? Just too low, yeah. Just too low? 120. What about 110? Is that right, Christine? Yeah. The man in the egg says yes. Spooky. Out of interest, what would be the best price on the picture? No, it's got holes in. <laughs> Thanks, Christine. You're on my side. <laughs> uh, 25. Would you do it for 20? What do you think, Christine? Yeah. OK, that's fine, thank you. Someone get Christian a white cat a stroke. So, in total, that's £130 for that metalware. Thank you so much, Mike. Thank you. Christian, you've been a star. <laughs> From the egg. Goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs> it's a double yoker, that is. Right, back to Mill, where Philip is still finding new things to pique his interest. One of the things I love about the business, you know, auctioneering, is the way things have changed, and today, you send people emails notifying them when there's a sale and you send them a catalogue and all the other stuff in the world. Those are the days, look. The old auction poster. So this is from Manor Farm Slad Hooten in Rotherham. And uh, there was some valuable surplus household furniture, a chestnut nag mare, poultry and appliances. Sounds like your kind of sale, Phil. 55 pounds on that. I love all that stuff. The thing is, is someone in Lincolnshire going to want to buy a poster that relates to a farm sale in Yorkshire? Well, do you know what? Sometimes you have to go with your heart, don't you? He's an old romantic, isn't he? In the meanwhile, those two chimney pots he was looking at earlier have now been formally introduced. What do you reckon, Phil? Do you know what? Actually, nothing like one another at all, are they? Look at them. But hey, I still think they're quite fun. Time to talk money. Helen, I don't think you've had a look at those chimney pots, but they're clearly not a pair, are they? Not really. One is slightly larger than the other. What did you say the little one was priced up at? It's £30. Yep. The bigger one on the ticket says 55 but I fear I can do it for 50 
you know, it's, that's 80. Well, I could do, a, if you were buying an it's unmatched a, pair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we could do 70, would that? Uh, OK. And what about this poster, which I love that poster? Uh, that... It's, that's got £55 on it. We could do that one for 45. So that's 115, isn't it? And if I bought it all is. three... To give you a chance of a profit, I think we can do those for 100 for the three. Okay. 100 pounds? Yes. You're an absolute angel. Thank you very Thank much you. indeed. Thank you. That works out to £35 for the poster and 65 for the almost pair of chimney pots. Thanks for that. Thank you. Thank you. Take care now. So that's him off the blocks as well. Let's make track, shall we? Natasha, meanwhile, has trotted along to the pretty market town of Hebden Bridge. At one time, it was known as Trouser Town, thanks to the number of clothing manufacturers hereabouts. But Natasha's taking Shank's pony to this unobtrusive workshop to find a horse of a different colour. Ha <laughs> ha! Greeted by Pegasus himself. Hello. Hi, you must be Steve. Oh, hi, hi. Hello, Tasha. Lovely to meet I'm you. Steve. Yeah, pleased to meet you. Steve's been making and restoring rocking horses for over 30 years now and is something of an authority when it comes to these rather fine beasts. It goes back as far as people have had an interest in use of horses. And ever since we developed wild horses into creatures that helped man, mm. we've been making miniature ones for our children to play on and use, I suppose, eventually, as time progressed, becoming, as an item, similar to that. This the hobby a, horse. A hobby horse, yeah. <laughs> this, this is a good one. This is a cleverer one with a modern plastic wheel. It's got a leatherette ear and it's got uh, uh, an all-purpose, very good quality mop. That is a mop, isn't it? Um, it doesn't quite, you know, evoke the idea of riding on a horse, but it's a good start. Yeah, and nothing much changed, I guess, until the 19th century and the mass ownership of horses and children had to have horses to learn to ride as proper equestrian training devices and that's how rocking horses come to be what they are today. Oh really? Quite so sophisticated. Not, not just for play but to get well, one used to sitting on a saddle as it were. Some of these horses had removable bridles to get children used to tacking up and real horse hair for their manes and tails to practice grooming. But most importantly, it allowed budding riders to safely get a feel of being on horseback. Time for a bit of a gallop, I think. I've only been riding a few times, but as I'm sitting here talking with you and rocking on the horse, it really does feel like the real experience. It feels safe, it feels good. Yeah, you've got the right balance now. And this style with all the metal brackets, etc., as opposed to the U-shaped rocker, which would you say is the more popular? Originally, the, the horse that's uh, sitting just behind us, mm -hmm. the bow rocker horse, was, was definitely the first thing that came along in, in, the, in the 19th century. They lost popularity around about the turn of the century. And um, along came these horses on the swing stand that we're sitting on now riding. These beautifully handmade toys were expensive to buy and would have adorned the nurseries of well-to-do households. In fact, Queen Victoria herself had a role to play in popularising these playthings. When she went off to open George Dock in Liverpool, she called into a long-established rocking horse maker and she chose for herself a rocking horse. And then she was asked, how would you like it painted? Mm -hmm. And she chose one of her favourites, a grey, a dapple grey. And from then onwards, Dapple Grey was the firm favourite of people in this country. Rocking horses have largely fallen out of favour as children's toys, and so Steve's magnificent creations are mostly sold to collectors. But he's also kept busy bringing well-loved antique horses back to their former glory, and it's always handy to have an extra pair of hands. OK, here we go. I am quite scared because someone is probably paying you good money for this restoration. Most people just go for it, they, they, they dip the brush in that, they pull about half a pound of glue out on the brush and start splashing it all over, it goes everywhere, you've done it meticulously carefully, then you're going to put it in place. Press it up against that edge. It's a so bit footery. We're happy with it in position. Okay. Behind you, there's a little tin. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, bring the straight out. away we tack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. can't believe you're letting me do this. Feel it going through? I can. Yeah, keep going. Keep it into the woods. 
Take your fingers away. Steve. Wow. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm going to go out on a high. I'm going to leave the saddle to you. Thanks for your help. <laughs> Employing a slightly speedier mode of transport, Phil is supposed to be heading for the minster town of Halifax. But he must have taken a wrong turn somewhere, because he seems to have arrived in the Piazza San Marco in Venice. What is going on here? <laughs> Peace Hall. This magnificent Georgian structure was built for clothmakers and merchants to buy and sell lengths of fabric known as pieces, hence the name. It's now home to Phil's next port of call, Al's Emporium. We do like an emporium. Hi, I'm Philip, how are you? Hi Phil, I'm Simone, nice to meet you. Can I call you Nina? <laughs> you should get over oh, it. Just get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> he knows how to make a good first impression, doesn't he? All smoothie. It's all laid out very cleanly in here, no need to rummage. But is there anything in this myriad of cabinets that speaks to our man? Already, they're making me feel like I'm at home because there's three bits of Worcester porcelain here. Now, if you're superstitious like me, the peacock is a really unlucky bird because the peacock's feather is the devil's eye. If you have the peacock's feather in your house, like it's mega unlucky, and the world will collapse around your ears. So that's got uh, a little peacock on it. It's in a pine tree, and that's a fairly well-known Worcester decoration. But by and large, a vase with a peacock on it is roughly two-thirds the price of a vase with a pheasant on it. How bonkers is that? But I'm not going to buy it. It's bad luck. We'll steer clear of that one, then. Anything a bit luckier? Can I have a look in 20, please? You can. Those three bits in the bottom? Oh, dinosaur poop. <laughs> Now, don't smell it, Phil. <laughs> Got any paper? <laughs> no, but I'll get you some after. How do you know that that is what you say it is? I don't know. It's your it's a, shop. It's a cabinet holder. One assumes that she has the expertise. This is fossilised dinosaur poo. It, it's, it is. It's one of our best sellers. Really? Yep. Little boys in particular. Hey. That says a lot about you, Phil. <laughs> Technically known as coprolites, these dino droppings are quite useful to paleontologists to find out about diet and migratory patterns. Definitely not a floater. So we don't know from which dinosaur's bottom this appeared? No. So Sorry. Oh, you can't say it's a velociraptor or a T-Rex. No. Dinosaur poo. I'm thinking of buying dinosaur poo. All those years of training, Phil. These are £12 a, plop, a pop. I think we know where this is heading. If I bolt bought <laughs> these here... Yes? What are they going to cost me? Come on, you're going to help me. Oh, get me calculator. Help me, not oh, calculator? Got... I can do that. Three twelves is 36. Each cabinet's got its discretion, Phil. 25 quid. 20. Just, just shake my hand. Work oh. twos. Thank you very much. He should have worn rubber gloves. I've come to an antique centre and I'm walking out with three piles of... Mind you, it's probably not the first time I've done it on this programme. You said it, mate, not me. <laughs> I think we'll call it a day, shall we? Time to regroup and head off to pastures new. I can tell you one thing, I haven't found an undertaker's. <laughs> did you actually look? Yeah, of course I did. Yeah, just wait till he tells you what he did find. Nighty night, wash your hands. Now, our trippers are normally very cagey about their purchases, but this morning, Philip just can't wait to let it all out. Tash, I've got something to show you. Okay. Ta da! Look at that. Oh, that, good. Tash, is dinosaur poo. Coprolite! That's what it's called, coprolite! Well, it actually comes from the Greek. The light part comes from lithos, which is stone, so copro must be poo. It's like stone poo or some fossilized poo. She's quite expert on poo, isn't she? Actually, quite a good looking poo. Because <laughs> I've seen these before and they just look like lumps and it's quite hard to believe, but ain't no denying. <laughs> Lordy. As well as that dinosaur doo doo, Philip bought an old auction poster and a couple of chimney pots. They're actually nothing like one another at all, are they? And he still has the princely sum of £223.40 to play with the silver fox. 
Natasha was no slouch either, picking up a rustic copper vessel with holes in and a brass jardinier. Yeah, it's a heavy beast. Leaving her with £105.80 to spend today, hopefully on something more pleasant than Phil's prized possession, but you never know on this show. Can we talk about something else now? There's another nice wall look. Isn't that a lovely that's wall? That's a good wall. Actually, yeah. do you know, that's just kind of in my peripheral vision. Yeah. Do you think you can cover that up? Yeah, I think I will, actually. It's making me feel a bit queasy. <laughs> You bought it. Later, we'll be heading to that Louth auction, but first, Natasha has gone solo and made her way to the many city of Wakefield. Her first port of call today is the old curiosity shop. Let's hope it lives up to its name. <laughs> Hello, hi there, I'm Tasha. Hi, I'm Les, Natasha, nice to meet you. It's lovely to meet you. This looks really, really full of antiques. Where should I start, Les? I would start at the beginning. At the very beginning and work at my way around. And I'm working way around, I would. It's a very good place to start, so the song goes. I always do as I'm told. Very wise. She'll need all the help she can get because this place goes back quite a while. I wonder what gems she can unearth amongst all these cabinets. Charles Clement Pilling is a good maker of silver. Let's have a look at these. OK, so there are two of these. Pepperettes, very Art Nouveau. It's all about the organic swirl, the whiplash curve, the arabesque. And here we have something doing all of those things. This is curvy and, and wavy and exactly what the Art Nouveau was all about. Now, there's not a huge amount of weight in that. And silver is sold by the gram. The thing that doesn't worry me is that these probably won't be scrapped. These are sold to silver collectors. There's a name, there's age, there's design history there. And they're marked up at £45. That's probably not for the pair. I would say that's individually. And you'd be right, girl. £90 for the two. Anything else to your taste in here? <laughs> that is super cute. Look at this tin plate gramophone. Portable, made for play but actually would play a tune quite nicely. There's even a tiny... Is that the size of it? Is that a seven inch? It is a seven inch, but it's called a kiddie tunes. Very mid 20th century. Clockwork. The key is there, which is great. The design is gorgeous. It's very kind of woodland creature. They have got little almost butterfly wings on their backs, these kids, and they're each playing an instrument. They're singing in harmony with the birds. I, I'm just going to go around because I want to see if there's a maker. In fact, ah, oh, sorry. Let's see, I'm going to take it out. Here it is, the National Band. Yeah, OK, so there's a maker. Condition is poor. This has been used and loved, and that's exactly what it was made for. Yeah, that spins around no problem whatsoever. Oh, it's a wee bit wonky. £70 is the price on that. It's a lovely thing. Tin plate toys. Never bought one of those before. This could be my first. Maybe we'll make sweet music at the auction. You'll have to see if Les is playing to your tune first. Must say, I'm loving your sign, lots of items reduced. That is the perfect <laughs> sign for me. <laughs> I think both of these are cool, particularly in love with the tin plate record player. I would be delighted if you were to accept an offer of 35 pounds. I know it's so cheeky. I know I'm, I'm almost embarrassed. It is, it is. <laughs> I think that might be a little bit too low. What about 45 and we've got a deal? OK. Right, deal. <laughs> Would you mind terribly throwing in the mini record at £45? Yes, we'll throw the record in. Oh, really? Oh, that. good, there thank you. you. That was really embarrassing. Ready for some more. Yeah. Um, so... <laughs> Round two, then, the £90 pepperettes. I want to offer 45 and for goodness sake, let's just shake hands. What about... 60, 60 for the pair. Oh, no! I don't have enough money to do that. So my offer is going to be 49. Right, we'll go for the deal on 49. How's that? Right? That's an excellent deal, I believe. It's so great. It's, what do you yeah. mean it's an excellent deal? It's superlative. He's a very nice man, is Les. So that's £94 in total for the gramophone and those two pepper pots. And that means she's only got around £12 left. Don't forget your record, girl. 
Oh, you get two in there. Hey, bonus. Time to scuff a quick, I think. Now, is there anything that evokes Yorkshire more than the music of a brass band? From the trumpet to the tuba, there's something about that sound that just says Northern. And Phillips made his way to the town of Huddersfield to find out about the evolution of one particular member of the brass section. Oh. Hi, Phil. How are How you? Are you? Nice Good to see, see you. you. Come in, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. Blimey, this is cool, isn't it? Michael Rath has been making the highest quality trombones for over 20 years. His creations can be seen and heard in orchestras, big bands and brass ensemble the world over. And as Britain's only trombone manufacturer, he knows a thing or two about how these iconic instruments came to be. To start with, it was, a, it was basically a, a warning time years ago for armies or to warn people across the valley that you, were, you wanted something. So they'd use an animal horn or something like that. It was a communication device. Yeah. And I suppose as time's gone on, it's been developed and then made into a pleasant sound. It's not just a matter of blowing down a, a pipe, is it? No, it's certainly not. You need, you need to create the sound, first of all, and, yeah. the, and the instrument actually amplifies the sound. So, yeah. Yeah, so with, with, a, with a brass instrument, you have a mouthpiece, which is like right, that. Okay. You create an airstream, yeah. and then you, you use your lips as a reed. <laughs> and then you add your mouthpiece. <laughs> I'm almost there, I'm, yeah, I am really, almost really. there. I, I used to play a cornet in a CCF band at school, but I've got to tell you, it was very, very bad. <laughs> My cornet had an ice cream on the end of it. The simplest form of these wind instruments would be a hunting horn like this. By changing the pressure of your lips, you could alter the pitch. But for a full range of notes, it needed some modifications. A natural trumpet was basically a longer version of that, which could create more notes on it. Because it's longer. OK, yeah, so therefore it could be used in a musical performance. If, for instance, they wanted to change it into a different key, they could take this one off and put this one on to make it longer. And by altering the length of the pipe, it gives you a different range of notes. Yeah. Then the instrument was in that key for as long as you were playing it. For as long as you were playing it, okay, until you took that so bit off. So you couldn't off. alter it. You could alter it before the performance or quickly during the performance. Another component called a yard could be added and played like a recorder to increase the amount of notes. Essentially, the forerunner to the valves on a modern trumpet. But it was the sack butt. The name comes from the French to pull and push that first allowed musicians to alter the pitch by sliding a section of the instrument to increase its length. This was the forerunner of the trombone. That was sort of developed in 1450. And around 1770 or something, this came in, which is the, the modern-day trombone. Give it a toot, Phil. <laughs> Thank you, good night and goodbye. <laughs> Very good. He's definitely getting better. I think that's fantastic. Oh, it is a work of art, isn't it? Michael's factory produces only around 400 of these magnificent instruments a year. It's painstaking work as each trombone is beaten into shape, spun to form the bell, the pipes are bent and soldered, and then the finished item is assembled and polished to a high shine. They not only sound incredible, but look incredible too. So we've got a few different materials. Yellow brass, which is 70, 30 copper and zinc. Yeah. This is standard brass, but in a brushed or satin type yeah, yeah. finish. Yeah. Nickel silver parts. Yeah. And a, a red brass bell. But red brass, not copper. It's 90% copper, 10% zinc, which gives you that red yeah. finish. I've got one last tongue-in-cheek question for you. Mm. Why were there 76 trombones? <laughs> That's a very good question. I haven't got a clue. <laughs> and with that, I think it's time for the factory band to play us out. Take it away, boys. <laughs> Now, after that brief musical interlude, our Tash is heading for the last shop of this leg in Barnsley. How's it going, old girl? I'm OK, but I've pinned myself into a little bit of a coin. Just slightly. With only £11.80 pence left, let's hope that the Barnsley Antique Centre will be good to you. Throw yourself on their mercy, eh? Excuse me, Daniel. Yeah, yeah. I think a heart-to-heart -heart is what I'd like to have. No problem at okay. all, of course. <laughs> Are you a good listener? I am. I find myself with 
11 pounds 80 right in my back pocket yep and daniel i'm sorry to tell you that's my whole budget that, that's your lot right <laughs> would you mind terribly going to source two or three items that i could take to auction for that price yeah yeah i'll take a look around for you would you mind terribly Not i'll do the same all, and then yeah. maybe we can meet up in a few minutes 11 pounds 80 <laughs> 11 pounds and 80 pence right very good thank I, you sir i shall start looking for you <laughs> thanks good idea rope in some local help and look our other happy shoppers pitching up. And with over £220 to work with, you can find your own antiques, mate. I quite like that. Do I quite like that? I like what it is. It's a piece of parian ware, which is a, a biscuit porcelain that's really designed to look like it's marble. Named after the Greek island of Paros, which was famed for its marble. So that's going to date somewhere, 1860, 1900, something like that. And it's so out of taste. I mean, that is proper old school. Let's have a look at it. The key thing is condition. If you want to see a really good example of Victorian slush, there it is. Do I like it? Actually, I don't know. I think it's pretty dreadful. Which begs the question, why are you looking at it then? There are still collectors for these figurines, but it's not as popular as it was. And with £150 on the ticket, I feel a haggle coming on. Rachel? Rachel! Are you ready for a really cheeky offer? Does she have a choice? I'm um, a very cheeky offer, 50 quid for it. 50? Yeah, that's made you wince, hasn't right. it? Just, yeah, it has a bit, actually, yeah. 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 I think it might be a call to the dealer for that one. Go and have a mooch. <laughs> Do you think that's my colour? I know it's not your size. <laughs> oh. Oh. He only wanted something to go with his scarf. <laughs> Back to that Parian figurine, and, and the dealer has dropped his price to £65. 20 years ago, that was such a really lovely collectible mm. thing. Mm. I'll tell you what, £65? Yeah. I've kind of got a feeling I'm, I'm going to buy it off you. Right. I'd say he's happy with that, but I think that might be stretching it. Take care, my love. Take care, thank what you. What have I done? So while he heads off to ponder that question, it's time to see what Daniel has managed to scrape together for Natasha. Is this your collection? It is. OK, this is interesting. I'm immediately drawn to something that has a £50 price right. tag on it. It was £11.80 I have. <laughs> it, it was. I gave him the sob story on the phone to the dealer. He says he can have it for the £11.80. Can I have a look? Of course. Another reason is because it actually scares him. I'm not surprised. Well, I guess it's a deity, it's yeah. Far Eastern, but the figure is completely emaciated. It's just skeleton. It, it is. Um, that, that's why he doesn't like it. I think he just wants red. It's unusual. The thing that worries me is that that could be from a tourist market. Yeah. Or it could be from a temple. So this Chinese crackle right. glaze bowl. Yeah, I phoned the dealer up on that. Mm -hmm. That could be a couple of hundred years old. Mm -hmm. He's got it priced at £20, but again, he's listened to your sob story and he says he can have it for £8. I think I can discount the floral decorative tree. I think mm. it's between the Far Eastern items. Right. I'm more attracted to this. Mm. There's something quite just neutral and very delicate about that. This is just quite ghastly. What would you do, Daniel? To be honest, I'd choose a bronze. I think it's more going for it. Maybe I should just delve into unknown territory. Yeah. And... Go for the bronze. Go for the bronze. <sighs> Let's do it, Daniel. She's got there eventually, and every last penny spent. Emaciated Southeast Asian bronze figure sells for £10 million in antiques road trip shock. Are we going halves on it? <laughs> Thank you very uh, yeah, much. we can talk commission later. Yep. Daniel, how grateful am it's I for your help? I'm so grateful. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank Thank you. Take Thank care. You. Bye bye. Time we headed for that auction then. You're ready for a uh, hiding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's your turn, isn't it? It's not going to happen. It's your turn. If only I'd bought some poo. And on that note, let's get some shut up. Welcome back to Louth. Seems like no time at all since we were last here, doesn't it? <laughs> Is it going to go south and yeah, It's going to be a good day. It's going to be a great day. I've got a feeling it's going to be a good day. Come on. That's what we like. Positive mental attitude. We've wandered around West Yorkshire and now it's time to sell in Lincolnshire. 
John Taylor's auction rooms is where it's all going to happen, and on the internet. Philip shelled out £185 on his four auction lots. This is by far the coolest thing that Phil's bought. An auction poster from the early 1920s. Yeah, I'm a wee bit worried about this one because I would definitely give this house room. Natasha blew the lot. All £235.80 of her budget on five lots. Bless her. Do you know these things are so specialised? Oh, I haven't got a clue. That could be worth thousands of pounds. Thank you so much. Or it might not even be worth thousands of pence. I haven't got the first idea. But it's got a good looking little thing, isn't it? Let's find out what auctioneer James Laverack thinks of our pairs hall. Tin plate toys sell well with the gramophones, ones with the horn can make into the hundreds. This one, I think, is going to be more into the, the tens pounds. Well, I can honestly say I've sold a lot of fossils before, but I've never sold dinosaur poo. Uh, so I don't know quite where this one's going to go, although there will be a novelty factor. There's a first time for everything. Right, you two. It's a pack room, so fingers crossed, eh? It's so busy. A lot of people here for dinosaur poo, aren't they? Yes. Well, I have to wait, because up first is Natasha's big brass jardinier. I'm straight in there with a commission bid of 20 pounds, at 20, at oh. 20, at 25, 35, 40, 5, 45 on the net, at 45, 50, still got 55, at 55, 60, 65, at 65, 70, all on the net at 70, 75, at 75, 80, at 80 bid, at 80, I'm coming back to the room, at 80, at 80 pounds, and I'm gonna sell at 80. Internet. <coughs> That's rather taking the shine off things. I absolutely On thought that was lovely, and I would have liked to have owned it. Well said that. His chimney pots are up next. Santa's beard thrown in for free. Do you know what? I have a soft spot for chimneys. You do? I know, I know. I think I need help. 30, 30 straight away on the net. At 30, Ooh. at 30, we're away at 30. 35 in the room. At 35, 40 on the net. At 40, 5 in the room. At 50 on the net. At 50, at 55, back in the room. At 55. I can feel the colour draining from your face here. Five. At 55, yours, madam. If only they'd both been the same, eh, Phil? Do you know what? I thought I was on a winner there. Natasha's second bit of metal wear now and doubles as a sip. Ten bid. Ten, thank you, Maxine. Ten bid in the room at 12. Good old Maxine. Bid 16 bid. at 16. 18 on the net. 20. Wow. Five bid on the net. 30 in the room. At 30. At 30. Five on the net. 40. Let's see, you're right to the, the races room. here. At 40. Oh, five the on the net. 50 in the well room, you. at 50, five, we're still going, at 60 anywhere, 55 pounds and it sells. That's good. Internet. It's better than good. Our first profit today and more than double what she paid. Auctions are so strange. Bit. Well, let's see if this one has a taste for Victorian slash. You know when you sort of regret things in life? Yes. Well, I'm having a big parry and regret at the minute. 20 pounds, 20, 20 bid, thank you, at 20 in the room. Oh. At 25 bid, at 25, 30 bid, at 35, at 35, 40 bid, at 40 pounds. I'm surprised. Oh, at 40, because they five anywhere at 40. At 40 pounds and we sell and at 40. I'm ah. genuinely surprised. I'm genuinely not. He's inconsolable. Bad luck. Yeah, 20. for that. 25 with the lady 20. Time for Tasha's bargain Buddha. Hidden treasure or tourist trash. I've seen these before on this program make a lot of money and I'm rather nervous about it. 20 pounds, I'm asking. 20. 20 bit. Thank you, sir. At 20. At 20. 25. At 25. 30. 5, 40, 5. Something's definitely at happening. At 50, shake your head at 50, 5, I've got on the net. At 55, 60, 5, fresh bit at 65, 70. At 75, 80, 5, 90. At 90, with the gentleman at 90. At 90 pounds, and we're selling then at 90. Well done, you. I don't think Natasha can comprehend it. Must be divine intervention. 
Oh, no, that's brilliant. He said through gritted teeth. Phil's auction ephemera next. Would it make more than a chestnut nagmare? The profit would be nice today. Ten. Ten bid. At ten. At ten pound bid. At ten. At ten. At ten. The bid's in the room. At ten is a twelve. I can't know what they say. At ten pounds and we sell. Hand on the back. <laughs> oh, dear. No love for Yorkshire auctions in Lincolnshire. What do you say to that, Phil? I know what I'd like to say, but I don't think they'll film it. <laughs> Fair enough. Will Natasha's gramophone hit the right note? £25 bid on this lot at 25 <laughs> Right, we've jumped right up. We're £80 on the net at 80 at 80 well done. Should be, should be well done. There. 80. 90 bid at 90 5 bid at 95 100 110 110 bid. It should be. Well done, you. At 120 bid on the net, at 120, 130, 130 bid, at 130, at 130 pounds, and we sell internet. I'm chuffed. Brilliant. Well done. <laughs> That's music to her ears. A superlative profit. You know, sometimes in this program, you really start to question if you know anything at all. At least I know something. <laughs> now, I never thought I'd say this. But all of Phil's hopes rest on a pile of ancient excrement. Well, I'm definitely in the doo-doos now, aren't I? The dinosaur doo-doos. The dinosaur doo-doos. <laughs> well, I'm straight and I've got a bit of £20 on this lot at 20. Had 25 bid at 25 on the net. 30, 35, at 35, at 35. At 35 pounds of 40 anywhere. Where's more? Where's more? At 35 pounds. I'm very happy with that. <laughs> Good work. Sure. You know what they say in Yorkshire? Well, there's muck, there's brass. Um, I'll claim no expertise 20, in this subject. 20, <laughs> None whatsoever. Well, I am quite relieved. So is the dinosaur. <laughs> Last up today are Natasha's twisty pepperettes. Also made 30 pounds. 30, 30. Yay. At 30. Bids on the front. Five at the back. 35, 40. At 40. We're right on the front at 40. Five on the net. At 45. Oh, shake of the head. At 45. 50 on the net, at 50, oh, at 50 pounds, bit of 50. Five, 55, Stylish. at 55. You're all out in the room at 55. At 55 pounds, and we sell. That's all right. <laughs> oh, yes, it's great. <laughs> Definitely to Laz's taste. I think we can tell which way this auction went. Shall we go? <laughs> okay, I'll follow you out. <laughs> and I'll do the sums. Philip started out with £343.40, but after some losses and auction charges, that sunk to £273.20. While Natasha had a barnstormer. She made, after auction costs, a profit of £100.40p, so she races into pole position with £336.20. Thanks, Phil. Ever the gent, even in defeat. <laughs> It's a beautiful day. Well, it might be for you. Yeah. Let me tell you, it's a little bit overcast from where I'm standing. <laughs> but it's all still to play for.